Hi there, welcome to Mr. Morgan's Math Help. This is Algebra 1, Unit 1 on Sequences. We're talking today about Lesson 6 called Home on the Range. All right, as always, make sure you've done your homework first and that you're here to check it out, not just have it all copied down for you. That's not going to help you as you go along in your classes. Plus, this is your first math course probably in high school, and there's more to go. So you want to have a good foundation moving forward. So always do your stuff first and then come back to check your solutions to see if you're understanding things. All right, today we're looking at um, more uh, sequences here. It says find the missing values for each ar arithmetic, arithmetic or geometric sequence, select whether it has a constant difference or a constant ratio, and then state the value of that difference ratio and then decide is it arithmetic or geometric, all right? So a couple things to keep in mind here is that what we're talking about today is that you're going to have some things that are arithmetic and what you're going to see there is it always is going to have a constant difference okay meaning you're going to see like plus three or minus seven some sort of constant difference there in from term to term if you're dealing with a geometric sequence you're going to see a constant ratio you're often going to see it like doubling times two or maybe being cut in half, you know, times a half, that type of thing there. So those things tend to go together. Your arithmetic goes with your difference and your geometric goes with your ratio. All right, let's take a look at our questions. So first of all, we have five to 10, which looks like plus five. 10 to 15 is plus five. So we are counting by fives here. So go 20, 25, 30 and 35. Because I just see a common difference, I'm going to say it's a common difference there, and the difference in this case happens to be plus 5, we would say that this is um, arithmetic. Okay, as simple as that. And the next one, we have 20 to 10. It might be subtracting by 10, but if that was to continue, then you see 10 minus 10 is 0, and 0 minus 10 is negative 10, and that's not what's taking place. So instead, what we see taking place from here to here is we are dividing in a half, right? Divided by 2 or multiplying by a half is what we're doing again and again. Half of 10 is 5. Half of 2.5 is 1.25. So this becomes a common ratio. And the ratio in this case is a half. And because it's a ratio, it's also going to be geometric. The next one, 2 to 5 is plus 3, 5 to 8 is plus 3, so 8 plus 3 is 11, 11 plus 3 is 14, and 14 plus 3 is 17. So we have a common difference. The common difference here is going to be adding 3, and because it's a difference, we're going to have it be arithmetic. For our next one, we have 30 to 24, which is going to be minus 6. Double checking here, 12 to 6 is minus 6. So that trend is going to continue. The missing term is 18. Again, we have a difference. The common difference is minus 6. And because of the difference, we're going to say it's arithmetic, just like so. All right, next section here. Determine whether the given information represents an arithmetic or geometric sequence, then write the recursive and the explicit equation for each one. All right, so again, the arithmetic, we're going to be adding or subtracting. The geometric is going to be some sort of multiplication thing happening there, okay? So keep that in mind. So in this first one, we have 2 to 4, and then 4 to 6, and 6 to 8. So we can see that we're simply adding 2 again and again. So we're going to call this one arithmetic, first of all, making our recursive formula simply going to be the function n equals the previous term n minus 1 plus 2. That's all that's taking place there. If I was to set up my table real quick, like we've done before, and we have n over here and our f of n over here, and take a look at what's happening here between each term, 1, 2, and 3. We know that at f of n it's 2, and then it's 4, and then it's 6. We can see that in the first case here, we know that it's 2. Here we're doing 2 plus another 2. 
and then the base 2 plus another 2 plus another 2. So we know that in terms of the function f of n, we're doing 2 times the number, all right? So in this case here, if n is 1, and the first one, 2 times n, if it was 1, that'd be 2 times 1, which equals 2, and that matches there. And the second one, 2 times n would be 2 times the numbers 2 equals 4, and that matches there. So that's all we're doing in that one right there. But let's take a look at the next one. Because in the next one, we can see we're going 2 to 4, and then 4 to 8. So what's happening there is we're multiplying by 2. So because we're multiplying by 2, this is geometric in this case here, meaning our recursive is going to be f of n equals the previous term, n minus 1, times 2. Now, in terms of our table, we have n, right? We have our n there, and we have n at 1 and 2 and 3. And our f of n values we have as 2, 4, and 8. So the first one is going to be 2. The second one is going to be 2 times 2. The next one we still have our 2, and we're going to multiply it, right? Multiplying this by 2. Now we're going to multiply that by another 2. So this becomes 2 times 2 times 2. So for each of these, what we can see is that I have my 2 as my base value. And essentially, whatever the n is becomes my exponent. So a lot of times when you're having, uh, when you look at the recurse, uh, the explicit, f of n equals 2n, what's interesting is that when you look at the, um, the recursive formula, you're going to use plus and minuses there. When you look at the explicit formula, then you're going to use multiplication for the arithmetic one, and you're going to use an exponent for the other one. Okay, so this becomes a nice little chart for you to kind of look at and think about, all right, for how that works. So if it's arithmetic, it's like that. If it's geometric, it's going to be like that. All right, let's take a look at some more. There we go. All right, next one here. Let's get a new color. So we're going to be going from 3 to 7, which is plus 4, 7 to 11, plus 4. Because it's a common difference there, there is arithmetic, like so. Then we have the function f of n equals n minus 1, the prior term, plus 4. Okay? So then we got to take a look and say, well, when it's a plus 4, the function part, here's what we want to think about. This is our change. That's our, in a sense, our rate of change or our change... Right, which is also, in math terms, often referred to kind of as a slope. We know it's going to be changing by 4 times whatever the number is going to be. The question is always, is there something after that? Okay, so if I look at the first one, 4 times 1 is 4, and I want to get to 3, so I need to subtract 1. For the second one, 4 times 2, that's, that's my n, is 8, and I subtract 1. So I can see going again and again, I'm going to have a minus 1 there. I can always figure out what this value is going to be by backing up one term to 0. And so instead of adding 4, and if I go this way, I'm going to subtract 4. 3 minus 4 is negative 1. And so that becomes the value here, which is what we see happening here and here. All right. Now, for the next one, because we're going 5 to 8, I could think it's plus 3, but here to here, that's definitely not plus 3, right? So I know it's not going to be adding. So in this case here, I'm definitely multiplying by something to go from there to there. So it's a multiplication of something. Just what is that? I don't know. But for now, we know it's geometric. And I know my recursive formula is going to be f of n equals f of n minus 1 times something. Well, what is that something? Well, I'm, what I'm thinking of is this. I have to do 5 times a number. Let's just call it x equals 8. So 5 times some number is going to equal 8. Well, what is that number going to be? Well, to solve for x, I divide both sides by 5. So x equals 8 fifths. Well, that may not help you much, but 8 fifths is actually equal to 1.6. 
So I know I'm multiplying by 1.6 here and here, okay? So formula-wise, what's happening is I'm going to take the value of 5, and I'm going to multiply it by 1.6 to the, in this case here, I want to have a 5, so I'm going to say n minus 1. Remember, because geometric, I'm going to have some sort of exponent at, in, my, in my explicit formula, okay? Let me back up real quick. I didn't even finish B. Recursive, f of n minus 1 times 1.6. So explicit now is f of n, and we're going to have it be equal to 5, kind of that kind of base number there, times 1.6. And we don't want to multiply by n because that would include it in this first one. We want that to be just a 1, so it's going to be n minus 1. All right? So hopefully it's starting to make a little more sense as we're working through these here. And you know, we're past lesson 2 and 3 and 4, so almost lesson 7 where it all starts coming together. All right, next one. Cami invested $6,000 in an account that earns 10% interest each year, meaning that in year zero, she's going to have $6,000. In year one, it's going to be $6,000 plus a 10%. Well, it's not really plus 10%. To find out 10%, you're going to do, uh, you're going to find out 10% by multiplying by 0 0.10, which is actually equal to $600. So in year one, she's actually going to have $6,600, okay? So those are our values there. So while it's increasing by that, the next year, it's not increasing by $600, $600 next year. The next year actually increases by $660. So you'd actually have $660, and you'd have 7260 So the numbers get a little weird as time goes on. What we want to think about here is it's not arithmetic. It's going to be geometric because of the way it's growing. It's multiplying by, you are going to think it's by 10%, but it's actually not. Because look at our total. We went from 6,000 to 6,600, which means I get to multiply by a number that includes the original amount. So I'm actually going to multiply by 1.10. That 1 represents the whole that I started with. And the 0 0.10 represents the extra 10% I'm adding to whatever I have. Okay, so in terms of recursive, f of n equals f of n minus 1 times 1.1. In terms of explicit, okay, this one gets a little trickier, right? f of n is going to equal, in this case here, our f of n is going to equal our 1.1. I'm sorry, it's going to equal our 6,000. <laughs> we have to have our number to start with, our base number to start with, our 6,000 times 1.1 to the n power. Now that means in year zero, in year zero, 1.1 to the n power is simply going to be 1, so you're still at 6,000. But in year one, then it's 6,000 times 1.1, which is going to give you 6,600. In year two, this becomes squared, and it continues to grow. All right, so that has how interest works there. So the tricky part here would have been perhaps maybe not quite sure how that would have worked. You might have had an answer of just 0 0.1, not recognizing that by doing 0 0.1, you're actually taking away money. You, all, you want to include the full amount to begin with, that 100%, and then the 0 0.10. All right, next, Scott decides to add running to his routine and runs total of one mile the first week. He plans to double it the more he goes. So double it means times two. Multiplying means geometric. Recursive, f of n is going to equal f of the previous term times two. Not too bad there. Now let's think about this as a table. In week one, right, the first week he ran one mile. In week two, we double that to two times two. In the third week, we double that again, so that's going to be four, all right? So what's happening with this running here? Well, here we're going to have the, in the in the first week, in the first week, we're going to say if we do the two miles all the way through, n minus one, well, two times, uh, n minus one would be one minus one, which is zero, and that gives me simply 1, right? 
over here, if I did 2 times 2 to the 2 minus 1 power, that's 2 to the first, which is 2. Here is 2 to the 3 minus 1 power, so 2 squared, which is 4, and that works out well. So for our explicit, we would say f of n is equal to 2 to the n minus 1 power, just like that. Okay, so it's sometimes good to make this little table here so you can see kind of what's going on, help you figure out what you want to do, and then work on the explicit there. All right, so great job. Let's move on to the last part here, I think. Okay, last part, we're going to be dropping numbers in here. So this becomes 2 to the 5th power, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, or in other words, 32. And then the next one, we're going to put 2 to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Here we have 5 to the 4th power, so 5 times 5 times 5 times 5, which is going to be 25, 25 is 625. To the 1st power, 5 to the 1st power is simply 5. The next one, watch your parentheses here, they are right there on the inside, so we're going to multiply negative 2 3 times, negative 2, negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8. Next one, 0, negative 2 on the inside of the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay. Next one, we have minus, and we have 2 cubed. So this becomes 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So minus 8, or simply negative 8. To the 0 power, you have negative 2 to the 0 power. Okay, so what happens here is this is the part that's actually together. 2 to the 0 power is 1, so we have negative 1. And so we would say in this case here that our answer is going to be simply 1. Okay, so um, yeah, so there we go. Uh, next one here, we're going to go with, uh, plug the 5 in there. So we have 3 plus 4 times 5 minus 1. 5 minus 1 is 4, so we have 4 times 4, adding 3. 4 times 4 is 16, so 3 plus 16. And 3 plus 16 is 19 for that one right there. And our last one here, <laughs> which is 3 plus 4 times 0 minus 1 becomes 3 plus 4 times minus 1, and then that becomes minus 4, so 3 minus 4. 3 minus 4 is minus 1, and that becomes my solution. I chuckled because I actually got almost as far <laughs> about 20 minutes ago, and then I ran out of storage, and it didn't save. So that's it for the day for my second time through the homework. Hope that helps you out a little bit and starting to make a little more sense. We'll start putting all the pieces together in Lesson 7 uh, for next time. Hope to see you again. Thanks. Have a good day.